Hello. How is everybody? Uh, welcome to Living Waters Fellowship Online. Um, I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, I really uh, thank you for your time if you're watching this. Uh, I'm hoping to reach out to people that are wanting answers for one. Uh, what is true and, and how does God speak to us in truth through our hurt, through our pain, uh, through things that go wrong in life, through troubles and trials? And is there a purpose? Um, is there something that I'm missing? Because many times we get really uh, caught up in the hurt and uh, it starts controlling our lives and we get bitter uh, we really need, all of us need each other, you know, to be lifting each other up in love no matter uh, how we see things. Um, because the only way to overcome anything like that is, is to have a unity of love. And um, I have learned that unforgiveness, when you keep it in your heart, to not forgive someone because of the hurt, it stores burdens in you. And what I mean by burden, it's like a weight. It's like something that you're dealing with all the time. Uh, it stays on your mind um, constantly. Um, it bears a burden on you. You know, it's... Uh, and I know it might be hard to forgive people sometimes, guys, and, and I understand that. that. Some of the things are just terrible what they do. Um, but it would do yourself some good to not get bitter. Don't allow that darkness to come in your heart. Protect your heart. If you're a Christian, if you've received Christ, please protect your heart. And if you're not a Christian, please come to Jesus today who uh, paid the price for all your burdens, uh, all your sins. He took your burden upon him. Um, he, he is the one that will save you in any way necessary that you need to be saved and delivered um, by seeing him in, in the true light that he offers and his light gives light unto us and the light is the truth and the love that he offers to overcome and to let go to cast all your cares upon him uh, to trust in him for salvation unto God um, to not allow yourself to get so damaged that you actually become an enemy of God because through your heart getting darkened and becoming hateful, um, sinning, falling into sin because of that, um, it's a trap that the devil sets. And Jesus Christ in, in his uh, example of salvation from God, of him given himself sacrificing to forgive us he that was righteous the son of God that came from God uh, died for the unrighteous to save them to save the sinner to bring us in the truth of belief in Jesus to do so true repentance is believing that Jesus saves you from your sins and not only your sins but from yourself from pride from hate from evil um, he puts a love in your heart and an understanding in that truth that if you believe that, you carry that with you. And uh, sometimes our first reaction, our, our first way of dealing with things might not encompass that in the way that we should. But the Holy Spirit will correct you. It will convict you. Uh, I find that hard sometimes. Um, when I know good and well someone's wronged me and I didn't do anything to them, and then I'm falling under conviction because of the way my heart is towards that. And uh, that was hard to accept. I had to let go of a lot of pride. Uh, and then the Lord started giving me understanding how he's seen in my life what, you know, from the beginning, how the devil's done things and, and, and led me down a path of bitterness and um, because I didn't know how to deal with the mental anguish from pain, 
you know, from hurt. Um, I thought I could be tough enough to deal with it on my own, and, and that's not true. Um, masking something or covering it up is never a way of dealing with anything. You gotta hit it head on in the ugly truth of it and still forgive it. Sometimes we wanna to come to some kind of compromise so that we can forgive somebody. Like we, we try to work it out in our mind. Well, well, it's probably because of this is why they did that. And, and I just wanna say this, uh, I know we need we might need excuses to lessen it or water it down, but it, but in the truth of it, it doesn't matter how you water it down or lessen it. The action was done. The thing, the offense was was given. And uh, trying to deal with it, to compromise it in such a way, uh, you just have to look at it in the ugliness and the truth of it that we all do this at times. We all. Can make mistakes we all can we all can get caught up in our feelings and emotions and say things we don't mean we all can um, have something that we've dealt with in our past unresolved that uh, we attach to everyone else um, the way we see things and look at things is through the perception of hurt and pain many times um, that's why it's so important that when you believe in Jesus and you receive him, that you also walk in that same love, that same spirit that you received um, to protect your heart. You can have a zeal for God and then your heart can be far from him. And, and what that does is cause hypocrisy in, in what you believe in and who you believe in. Um, we must love mercy even though we want justice. Um, and sometimes justice in, in, in the eyes of, of one that's received Christ has to be that I see the offense and I know that it's caused these issues and that, that has to be looked at and, and, and confronted. And, um, but we also hope for mercy uh, when dealing with, with justice. We also see the needs. When, when, if you only look at the offense, then there'll be only judgment and condemnation. But if you look at the hope of helping someone, like how did they get to that point? Um, then you see the true evil lies and uh, only God knows what, what's happened in their past and has turned them in their heart in this way. I believe it's because of unbelief in Jesus always that we come to this point that Jesus saves us from all this. Um, I believe that we've been born into that, that type of spirit, that type of manner, mannerism of our spirit, um, where we look at things through an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and and we uh, we understand that we've been hurt and we want we either want to. Uh, hold the pain in silence and resentment or we want to retaliate and have revenge well, I'll show them and then so the evil that we received we return the evil and we know that's not the way to handle things that, that in itself speaks that it's not true you know it's not the way to handle things and then we see how God handled our wrongs our sins that we committed against him and he sent his son to pay the debt for them all and offers forgiveness if you repent, if you accept that you've sinned against him and you come to him and you say, I believe that you're, not only do I believe that I am a sinner and that I've done wrong and, and I admit it, um, I truly believe, before I can even say that, I truly believe that you sent your son to pay the debt for sin so that I can come to him and have peace with you through the sacrifice that he's given and in his resurrection demonstrating the victory over sin and death after he had been dead for three days in the grave and uh, that he every stripe that he took upon him um, everything that he suffered righteously through was in love towards us that we will see that love and through this is how we overcome so I think uh, the big picture is, do you want to overcome or do you want to condemn? 
and I found if condemn is your position, that you're condemning yourself at the same time when you're doing that. Because none of us are innocent. None of, all of us are guilty. And uh, we start looking in a comparison way, like, well, I didn't do this, but he did that. Or at this time in my life, I'm doing better now. I forgot my past already. Um, sometimes we forget that Jesus forgave us of our sins. <laughs> sometimes we, we look through that that mannerism, you know, that, that attitude. And so when we see people doing things, we want, we think we need to um, point it out uh, rather than actually pray for them or, or try to help them uh, privately. Uh, I've learned that recently, how important that is to, um, when you truly love people, you don't want to just put them on blast when something happens, maybe come to them privately and show them that you love them. And that in itself, I think they will respect that your intent is not to exploit them, but to help them. Uh, if this is possible, according to the offense, and you know, there's many variations and things and how you should handle them. Um, the more, the more, uh, the offense is uh, heinous in, in, in what it accomplished. Uh, I think the more um, we should look at it uh, as dealing with it in, in um, a different manner that's appropriate um, for the offense. Uh, but let's not lose sight how important it is to stay with our eyes on Jesus Christ or we will drown in self. Uh, as soon as we look away from Christ, we start looking within. I just want to say this. Even Peter did that when he was Walking on water, a lot of people really want to have that faith that Peter had so that they can say that they walked on water. And, and there's some people that might even think that they do walk on water. Uh, maybe that's the issue. Um, but, you know, when, when Peter's eyes was on Jesus and he was walking on water, he wasn't conscientious of himself. Um, but when he started looking at what he was doing, that's when he became conscientious of himself. He took his eyes off the Lord by doing so. And I have learned, I just want the faith to walk on water. I don't have to have the experience uh, or the recognition of doing so. Um, but I do want that faith that believes that I can with my eyes on Jesus, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, but last week, I, I said we're going to pick back up. I'm doing a series of truth, and we said that we're keeping a spiritual finger on our pulse, right? You know, when they monitor your pulse, they, they, they count the heartbeats per minute. We're, we're going to, I'm going to, I want to use that as an understanding. I want you guys to, to kind of, I like to use things physical to explain things spiritually, as Jesus does, because it, it's, um, it's really helpful in understanding things. Um, keeping a spiritual finger on your pulse, monitoring your heartbeat for God. And heart, for me, is trusting and believing. That's truly what my heart is. When the Bible talks about my heart, it's what everything that I do comes from. It's my belief. It's my foundation. It's my trust. Um, it, it's it's my go-to to how to go to. Um, and so today I want to continue. We were talking about hurt and pain and we we're talking about the mental anguish that comes from hurt and pain and how Paul had taught, taught, uh, taught us in Romans 8.22 that the whole world is in pain and, and, and hoping that for the redemption of this body, you know, um, even the earth in itself, even those are the first fruits. I mean, he's saying everyone so I want I pointed out that when we are in pain and we are hurting, that the first thing that it does to us is tries to uh, seclude us, like we're the only one dealing with it. But the Word of God actually demonstrates that that's not true. That we are all going through. Even the earth itself is. Even the first fruits, you know, those that were call, called by God, um, and wrote the Word, and are that the Word spoke about them, um, and the anointing that they were given by God. 
you know, either in positions or different things that they did as a prophet or a king uh, psalmist, um, leading God's people, um, and and God used them as a mouthpiece, you know, for His will and, and to write His word. And so, let's. Uh, I want to continue today. I said I wanted to pick up from that, and uh, I hope that you you watch that video from last week, if you haven't. And and we're going to continue in this series. I said it was a true series, but I want to say that it's a love of the truth series. I do not want to leave the love out. You can't just have truth without love, and you can't have love without truth, and they should never negate each other. Um, in all honesty, you can't have one without the other. Um, and, and we discussed many things to deal with um, mental anguish, and even today I'm picking up from that, trying to pick back up where we were talking about mental anguish. Um, uh, the onset of pain and hurt is one thing, you know, or the experience when it happened is one thing, but how you mentally process that over time afterwards and, and how you deal with that, even Jesus said it's not what goes in a man, you know, that defiles him, but it's what comes out of him. So after we we take in what, what's been taken in, like we can see something sinful, and if we put it in our heart, okay, I want to go do that, uh, then because of what we've seen has become vexed in us to go out and do those things. Um, or we could have looked at it and said, that's sinful, I want nothing to do with it, and we turn away from it. So how we deal with things, and uh, when people hurt us, and uh, when you need to forgive them, and you can't, it's hard for you to find forgiveness in your heart for, the, for what they've done. I think, first of all, we need to come to the truth that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And if Christ lives in you, then you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross, because remember, he denied himself, and he picked up his cross for you. And it, it's not I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me, is what Paul said. So if we receive Christ as we're growing and we're maturing, we need to understand this, guys. We, we have to first forgive people. And, and you're going to find along that path that you weren't forgiven them, there's probably a lot of things that you needed forgiven for, too, that you did to others. Maybe they didn't say nothing to you. Maybe they didn't confront you. And, and that's a problem. I'm going to be honest around, among brethren. I, I just want to say we are supposed to confront one another, and there's a reason for that. Um, not that we make every little deal that. I understand that. We don't need to always, you know, we don't need to brood over insult. You know, like little things that you just kind of let go uh, with understanding. I'm talking about actual offenses, you know, that, that could carry in your heart. See, an offense to me is something that you can carry in your heart for a long period of time. And the reaction to it can cause bitterness, and hate, judgment. Um, it can darken your heart. And the reason that I do this Living Waters ministry is because in my past, I didn't handle things the way I should have handled them. And I'll just leave it at that. And I, I should have handled them uh, the way I process things because what come out of me was just as wicked as what come against me or what went into me. And I needed the Lord Jesus Christ. And even after all that, when I come to him, he was still there. He was still true to his promise. Many want to preach that, you know, because the dog returned to his vomit and this and that. There's a greater message in that. I don't want to get into that too much, but I want you to understand. Uh, one, one lady even said, doesn't, doesn't the dog itself sit under the table hoping for the crumbs from the master to fall? And, and, and the Lord was amazed by her faith. And you get, you got to understand in that message, it was teaching us to have faith in the Lord. When, when you come into hurt and pain and you're dealing with it, you're going to go through some hurt, man. If you love people, you're going to get hurt bad. 
Make sure it ain't you that you're loving more than the people that hurt you sometimes too. Sometimes I think when self-pity comes in and our love for ourself, and, and listen, I'm not saying you shouldn't love yourself. God created you and uh, we are fearfully and wonderfully made and we should love what God did for us regardless of any of the circumstance or situations we're dealing with, regardless of what we look like, regardless of our skin color, regardless. We, you, you need that in your heart in a, in a healthy way uh, to be healthy. And what gives me value is not anything that I can attach to it and what I've done or how I look or anything I've accomplished but that God gave his son, Jesus Christ, to save me. So I must have value. There must be something here in God's eyes. And, and then I found out the same value he has in me, he has in everyone for God so loved the world that he gave his son. It wasn't just me, it was all of us. And God's love for me gives me value. And I had a hard time with that because I got... I got caught up in mental anguish thinking that the reason things happened to me uh, was because I had no value. And that's what the devil will do to you. And when you don't know how to handle things when you're young, he'll prey upon you. He preys upon the innocent. Um, but know this, no matter what he's done through people, or how you've been hurt, that Jesus Christ is the answer. His love and his truth for you gives you value. It gives you strength. You are being delivered because of that. You can be delivered because of that. You will be delivered because of that. You put your hope in Jesus Christ. When we get hurt, we come to that fork in the road is what I talked about last week. And you can take one, one path that's very wide, and it's called defeat. Self-pity is on that road. Um, a lot of people saying, oh, man, that's just so terrible. I hate that you went, with, went through that. And they, they basically massaged the whole sympathetic self-pity, hurt, pain to, to keep that going. And that's where defeat's at. Or you get bitter and angry and start a sinful life and who cares anymore and if God was up there he wouldn't allow this and there ain't no God and I mean there's a lot of things on that path or then there's these ones that say there's many ways to God and there's many things and you know in this utopia oh there's so much on this broad path there's so many many different things but then there's this narrow way and this is the fork in the road you, you can go down that wide path, and I promise you, it always leads to defeat. Or you can take this really narrow path. It only has two feet, footprints on it, and it's Jesus Christ. And in him is the way, the truth, and the life unto God. I can't say that enough. Trust in Jesus, and this is how you do it. Before you start trying to clean yourself up, before you start trying to better yourself, Believe what God said and come to Jesus Christ, literally. He is real. Yeah, he's, he's not a fictation. Uh, he's not something that I'm just trying to conjure up in my mind to believe in. He's not some uh, fairy tale. He is real. He's eternal. He is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And he is your only salvation unto God. He is your only Savior. And he is enough. But we must deny ourselves and come to him. We must take all that we read in the scripture that actually points to him and set it down for a minute and say, okay, I'm coming. I come to you and I cast all my cares upon you. I put all my hope in you and I will wait on you, Lord because I trust in you, because I believe what God said. I don't, 
I don't. I know many people say, yeah, but I, you don't understand. I, I, and they have all these stories and these circumstances and these things and these. And, I, and, and I'm not trying to make light of things that were terrible in your life or anything. I'm not trying to make light of that. But I'm telling you, there is nothing that Jesus Christ cannot overcome. And I'm just asking you, if you have to wait to the day you die for 20 years to understand that, wait I don't I don't know I'm not God and I don't preach uh, what God's gonna do and how he's gonna handle you because I don't know your heart and people that do should never do so even though it's in the Bible and it shows this is how God handles things you don't know the circumstances you don't have the right to have that kind of judgment on someone and you need to probably just stay in your own life you know what I mean and, and look where you're at and don't meddle in men's matters um, actually pray for them I don't never want to settle on on being okay with someone being condemned but I'm not God but I do believe in mercy I, I do hope for mercy I do love mercy from God I do love hope to have hope in Jesus um, I do believe that he can save anyone that will come to him no matter what. And he will bring repentance in your heart. That means he will bring true belief in him in your heart. If we only knew how important it is, that faith that we have that works to that love. You know, and James, I, I, I want to, I wanted to go into something today. Uh, the point, the point that I made last time was I was walking uh, with the Lord while suffering. You know, it wasn't taught in the Word, and it, and it most certainly is. Uh, we, we went to First Peter five ten, and we found that it's there in Romans twelve. I just want you guys, if you will, turn there. Uh, I want to share the Word of God with you. Uh, in Romans 12, it's talking about resisting and striving against sin in, in the very beginning because we're looking to Jesus, right, as the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, he endured the cross, and he despised the shame, even, but he still endured it. He despised what he had to go through and how they treated him and how they ridiculed him and how they shamed him in nakedness and different things also. I mean, he went through so much. And, um, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God by doing so. Because he endured it. So it says to consider him. Uh, we're we're going to pick it up in verse 2 here. Let, let me just go ahead. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. You have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you. As unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor fate when you are rebuked of him. You know, some people can't handle somebody saying something, pointing out that they're wrong. They, they think judge not lest you be judged in the Bible. That's what it's saying, that you don't rebuke within the body of Christ, and that's not true. We most certainly do. We just don't come off as if we're the authority. But we most certainly rebuke. And however the church has gotten away from that and bought into this, well, I'm not better than him. I've got my own sins in my own life. Yeah, that's true, and maybe you need to start rebuking yourself a little more and, and rebuking each other because... The Lord works through us, and it's his word that rebukes us. It's not us. And we don't sit out punishment. Um, we actually set out to help each other. And if you look at this kind of discipline and this kind of rebuke as something wrong, then you're despising the chastening of the Lord. And they say, no, it ain't the Lord. It's him who said it, the way he said it, and this and that. And who does he think he is? And you're not getting it. In the body of Christ, there are things that are not acceptable. And if you continue in that, nobody says anything to you. 
and you just keep thinking it's all right, then you're going to suffer because of ignorance. If you can't humble yourself to receive that, how about don't pay attention to who's saying anything to you? Pay attention to what's being said, and it isn't the word of God, because what you're doing when you do that sometimes, you're refusing God's word and what it says, and so you won't take in the chase, and you won't take in the rebuke. And if they did it in a way that they're haughty, God will deal with them. I promise you that. And, and maybe you need to rebuke them for that. Say, well, you don't have to be haughty about it, but I understand what you're saying. This is what I'm doing is wrong. And I need to quit according to the word of God. And, and that's the way to handle that. It really is. And if the man is being haughty or trying to come off, then you need to point that out to him. Uh, rebuke him as well. But, but let's not get in a rebuke back and forth competition. Who can rebuke who for the most things? Uh, let's, let's actually stay concentrated on what was said and, and put it in our heart to not come against Christ, you know, while we're in the body. And uh, look at the importance of that, you know, to learn from these things. And I'm going to show you why it's important. Nor faint when you are rebuked to him, for whom the Lord loveth, he corrects and scourges every son when he receives. When he receives you, he scourges every son. And I don't know if I have time. I'm wanting to get into that today. It is about the baptism that Jesus gives you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get into that today or maybe the next week we'll start that. If you endure correction, God deals with you as with sons. Did, did you understand? So, what if this is the test to understand, for one, that you're being humbled uh, you know, in the, in the sight of God that when his word corrects you or those that are called by him use his word to correct you, how are you going to handle it? Are you going to say, don't judge me, judge not, and you're going to keep going down that road? Or are you going to look at what was being said by through the word of God if it was true and, and put it in your heart and say, you know what? Um, I was wrong. And you're right. I don't, I don't need to do that. What will happen when you do that? God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastens not? And it's saying, if your dad doesn't get on to you, then you're probably not his son. Or he don't look at you as his son. But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers... And it's saying, if you don't have this chastisement and everybody else in the family does, because we're all partakers of this, because everyone that comes to the Lord will have this. It says this in the Word. Uh, then are you bastards, which means illegitimate, and not sons. Oh. That's when you got to start looking in your faith and saying, wait a minute, what's going on here? Have you refused and denied God's word through people because you're worried more about your ego and who are they to say anything to you? You have that attitude that you're not subjective to God's word. And even the one that's given the rebuke, have you checked yourself? Are you, are you able to handle the rebuke? Furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence Shall we not much more rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Ooh. For they truly for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. That's another thing I've seen some people say they're handling it with joy. Man, learn to be real. That's all I'm saying. God, God doesn't want you to be fake. You know, if you truly don't love something, quit saying how much you love everything. People use that word, like, oh, I just love, oh, I just love them, oh, I just, you know what? I, I get it, man. I, I know there's some joy in your heart, maybe in how you see something, but don't, don't demean that word by making it just a, a common thing to say. God is love. And I ain't saying you don't have love for people, man, but you ain't got to say it a million times to prove it. It's what you do that proves it and in the, in the truth of it. And, and that you truly do love people because Jesus is in your heart. 
God gives us the ability to love as he loved us by receiving Jesus Christ. And we're commanded to do so. But saying it is not how we show love. It's what, what we do. Um, and, and I'm not saying you can't say it. But let it be backed up by what you do. Because some people maybe need to hear it. Sometimes I, I'm okay with it. I understand that, man. Um, I need a little pick-me-up. But we don't do it to give people pride or ego. We do it because we care for them. Uh, be careful how you try to pick people up, too, sometimes. Sometimes we, we spoil people or we go about things in a way that's fake. And it just produces bad fruit, man. Uh, it's not good because it's not in the truth, for one. And how you're going about it is just with lip service, not with your heart and what you do and, and how you care for them. It, some people think that people don't understand how they feel, so they have to say everything. Uh, I'm learning as more as I mature in Christ, the less you say, the better off you are. Um, you want people to know something, prove it to them when there's a time of need. You know, don't tell me how much you love somebody on Facebook all the time and just constantly love, 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 love. But I've never seen you reach out to that person once and they went through a long period of time of, of needing help. You want to show them you love them in their time of need, be there for them. With whatever it is that you have to offer that you can help them with. If it's just prayer, just sitting there listening to them, then so be it. Or if it's just... Uh, you know, give them good advice through the Word of God, um, whatever it may be. Um, maybe they need bread. Maybe they have needs to be met, and you have the, the ability to do so. And if you don't, find maybe find somebody that does. Um, yeah, but we have to love in truth and deeds, guys, not in word and lip service. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are trained thereby. This is what I mean by waiting on the Lord. This is what I mean by trusting in the Lord. This is what I mean when troubles come on you. Be, um, it says to be joyful, but what, what that means is not, not to fake that what you're going through is not hard. But the joy that we have actually comes in the hope that the in the hope in Jesus Christ that for one that He's with us through it all. Either He's chastising us, or we don't know all things. We don't know why things come. We we just know this: that regardless, I want my faith to be strengthened. I want to keep my hope in Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. And that I want to turn from anything that's putting me outside of the will of God so that I can walk with him. And, and he is fruitful, and I'm to be faithful. And I, I thank my pastor for teaching that recently. It's really been helpful for me, really pondering on how important that is, um, the faithfulness and the loyalty and the relationship that we have with God because we have peace with him through Jesus uh, to come to know him. And... Um, and, and knowing the true position that we're in with God is, is very healthy. And how you go about everything and, and how you look at everyone. That we are all sinners saved by the grace of God. And it's only because of his mercy that we have righteousness. There is nothing that we have done that has given us righteousness with God. Whether it's right or wrong, it don't take it away or it doesn't add to it. It's only Jesus Christ. And that should humble you. And the Lord is constantly trying to purge your faith, which means he's putting you in the fire, trials and troubles, and he's bringing you back out. And, and along the way, he, he's refining you like gold so that we come forth as gold and that we're sanctified in the truth. See, saints are sanctified in the truth. That means we're set apart by the truth. That means we obey the truth. That means we believe the truth. That means we teach the truth. But a lot of us think we know the truth, but we don't because we're not in Jesus Christ. In, our, in, our, in the first position, we think we had to turn from sin 
and, and well, people use the word turn from sin, but basically quit sinning or, or quit certain sins. I don't know however people look at this because it doesn't make any sense to me. I had to come and believe that Jesus Christ was going to save me from my sins. So I believe that first. I believe what he accomplished, the gospel. We need to teach this first before we start harping on homosexuality, fornication, drugs, and all this. Listen, I believe this. If they can come to Christ, even in the middle of whatever they are dealing with, right, and say, Lord, save me from my sins, please, Jesus, I pray that you forgive me, set me free. I believe that you're my Savior and you're my Lord. They believe in their heart unto righteousness unto God. And then with their mouth, they confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is the repentance we need. This is what repent means. This is what, this is what they were doing. Repentance. Then because of that, then they confessed their sins. Then they started walking, turning away from the old man because they believe what Jesus accomplished. So everything I do had Jesus in the forefront, in the very beginning, in the foundation, and that I can do all things through Christ. I can't do all things and then Christ will accept me. I do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Who saves me? Who redeems me? And we get this backwards. There's many people that think people ain't saved because of maybe their lifestyle where they got into something. I went through that. When I got saved three years, I was turning from things, but there were still some sins that I was dealing with that I, that I wasn't turning away from. And it caught up with me. And, and, and how I viewed my salvation. And what I mean it caught up with me is that the Lord had to deal with me. He had to chastise me. It was a seven or eight year ride. It was a long ride. And I fell into addiction. I fell into even more sin. Um, and the devil at the end of this was sitting there going, you were never saved. And this is why I'm so against anybody that teaches this. So who are you to doubt what Jesus Christ did and what I believed in my heart? First thing I want to say was what? You don't sin since you received Christ? Yeah, but that's why you're dealing with what you're dealing with. That's why you're judging. I said, oh, well, why aren't you dealing with it? You sinned. You've done things. My sin was worse than yours. Hmm. We've got to be careful how we look at things once we're in the body of Christ. Jesus said, let no man call unclean what I have made clean. But we, we can be wayward. We, we can uh, be ignorant. We can be babes, and we need to be brought up in, in the truth. We need to understand the, the importance of not sinning because of the things that come upon us because of that. But one thing we should never do is cause doubt or a stumbling block in somebody's faith and them believing that Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross and, and they received him. Maybe we need to help them with their discipleship and how they should walk now that they've received that. that. That's a whole other thing, but they should never be brought to doubt their salvation because of that. Because now you're, you're trying to make the gospel something that it's not. Or you're saying, no, no, I just doubt they ever really truly believe. I said, oh, you can speak for them? Why? Because they, they fell and they did this and they did that. And I said, well, you don't know what they're up against. You don't know what, what, what they're dealing with. And you're right, you're right. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all, even after accepting Christ, I don't know one Christian that's lived perfectly. If you know him, please send him to me. I want to talk to him. I want to see how he, he accomplished that. Please. So we gotta be we gotta be careful of the hypocrisy because there's no there's no truth in hypocrisy for one. And I don't want to demean the importance of turning away from sin and not sinning and not living a sinful life because there is harm that comes upon you. There is consequences to sinning. Even in the righteous. And God judges us by our works, even the righteous. And it is important in the in the last days to overcome this not stay in it to not remain wicked 
You, you won't inherit the kingdom of heaven if you don't repent and overcome. And, and that means believe in Jesus to overcome. It's very important to understand that when we believe in Jesus Christ, for one, he does save us, and for another is that we continue in that to be set free. And uh, when Paul talked about the, these certain sins, he, you know, you don't, we don't, uh, he was actually, before he even talked about his 1 Corinthians 6, he was, he was talking about how, uh, Believers were having issues with one another and they were taking them to the court. So he was describing why we don't go to the world because, for one, they're unrighteous. Why? Because, because they sin? Well, no, but they do these sins and it makes them wicked and unrighteous in God's eyes because they're being judged by what they do. The reason they're truly unrighteous is because they're not in Jesus Christ. And if you really read down from that verse after he lists all these sins that saying that they do not inherit the kingdom of heaven, uh, which I believe the inheritance is to be under the rule of God, um, that when you're in that kind of defiance and rebellion, you're not believing in Christ. Um, but, but he makes it very clear. He said, but you, you, at one time you were all of this. And he said, you were just like them, he said, but you have been washed, you have been clean. And he's trying to differentiate why, for one, why we don't take our matters to, to the world and try to handle them, we handle them among each other. Uh, because we're, what fellowship does the righteous have with the unrighteous? And why do we want them to judge us and handle our matters? We should be able to handle them then. If he can't, then somebody just say, you know what? I don't care, I'm going to take the blame, I'm going to take the count. And we do that out of love. For one another just to settle it and be reconciled because we have fellowship with one another when we're walking in the light is Christ is in the light and, and that's really what that means if you're contingent on pointing out and condemning someone then you're probably not in the truth or you need to be matured a little more in the truth um, because what we have is a gift and none of us deserve enough has earned it none of us can weigh out things in such a way um, we need to be ready to settle that um, just to overcome it and not let it turn into bitterness or hatred or darkness or anything among the brethren um, but, but yeah we need to understand that Paul didn't take away that they were saved because they did these things and, and they keep saying and, and he kept saying and those that do such things well my understanding of that passage is Paul made it very clear is that the reason we don't do those things is because we have been washed and cleaned. So when we continue doing those things, are we believing that we are washed and clean? Or are we still in the old man? And, and there has to be a time, you got to understand this too, when people first come to Christ, they have to put off the old man to put on Christ, and to put on the new man in Christ. And that doesn't happen in one day. That isn't some, some some people I don't know. It might take years. Even Jesus made it that they had that spirit for so long, you know, that it takes them longer. So I think we need to be careful how we look at things and not put ourselves in the position of God or not judge the brethren as if we're judging the world. And we can't judge the world. Only God can judge with without. We judge within as far as what is appropriate for being in Christ, and we correct that in the body. Um, but we don't make a man doubt his salvation or put him right back under the law by doing so. Uh, we keep our faith in Jesus Christ. Even when we don't have fellowship with one another because of a brother living in sin. Uh, even though we don't eat dinner with them. Even though we don't eat with them because they're living in sin. We don't, we don't want them to not trust in the Lord. We actually want them to trust more in the Lord. So that they will turn from these things and they will mature. Um, and we want them to repent and confess what they're doing and turn from it. Um, and we want that in our own life, most certainly. Um, but as we're going to continue reading Hebrews 12, and then I'm going to finish up here. I've been on here long enough. Uh, 
And then it says, the next verse, it says, Now no chastening for the present time seems to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are trained thereby. Wherefore, strengthen up the hands which hang down and the weak knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fall or fail of the grace of God, lest any uh, root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or God dishonoring person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Now, I want you to understand the blessing was the inheritance that he was to have. And he got bitter because his brother tricked him and and he was able to trick him because he was more concerned about what he was going to his brother was fixing him to eat he was considered a fornicator because of this uh, for one morsel of meat which is a corrupter you know, he was corrupt in his heart who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright and he was supposed to go to his father and receive the inheritance from his father. But instead of doing that, his brother tricked him uh, by offering him this, this food that he knew he loved and he made. And so the desire for that, of being in the flesh, distracted him from receiving what he wanted from his father. So I want to say this in this passage. Uh, when he wanted to receive what that what his brother inherited, the blessing that he got from God or from his father, he couldn't have it because it had already been given. And when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. For you are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. Uh, I don't even want to continue in verse 18. Let me just stop at 17. For you know how that afterwards when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He couldn't change his mind. For one, he can't believe that he his brother tricked him and, and there was some uh, uh, bitterness that sprung up you know looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God lest my or any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled people don't really pay attention to what his brother did how he tricked him to get this uh, and this is not even uh, putting emphasis on that it's really putting emphasis on how he couldn't change in his heart. He just couldn't, he couldn't find no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. He, he couldn't, he couldn't even get God or his father, I mean, he's talking about his father, but when we get in this place, we can't get God to even uh, give us mercy or, or, or to um, help us because of the condition of our heart, the bitterness and the hatred. It, it would have been one thing if he could have forgiven his brother. But obviously, there was a time that he was so bitter that it defiled not only him, but it defiled many people. And uh, I think we have to always protect our heart. We were talking about that earlier, guys. And I think uh, even when we, we don't do things, when the Lord's chasing us and when things are coming after us and we need to put it, we need to, the first thing we need to do is look in our heart and see where we're at and how we're looking at others and how we're looking towards God and how corrupt we've become in doing so.
and we need to ask the Lord to forgive us and we need to forgive those that might have wronged us truly forgive them and, and ask God to bless them and we need that in our heart or we can become defiled so going back to uh, I want to end with this why is it so important Paul why did you give me this message well I was talking about how to deal with mental anguish and I, I think we just seen there what it can lead to when we don't deal with it when somebody wrongs us or hurts us we, we can actually with many tears try to find repentance uh, but when our hearts become so darkened and we've done things in such a way we can't even forgive ourselves because what it turned into we can't even um, so this is what I say to you even if you get to that point I want I want to I want to tell you this it's important to start with the one that offended you in your heart and when you come to God be honest and make it known to God and you can't fool him understand that too you, you don't, it isn't just a procedure you go through it's something that you put in your heart to do because it's what is right and what God wants you to do and continually pray for the one that wronged you um, and pray for your heart that God would, would help you um, and have mercy on you and if you want to find repentance with the Lord you can't do it through bitterness you can't do it through hatred of one another you have to forgive you have to settle that before you can even bring your gift to the altar or before you can even come to him um, I think it's so important that God we need to understand God doesn't forgive you if you don't forgive others these are things that we have to put in our heart upon receiving Christ and the truth of receiving Jesus we cannot have that in our heart so when I was reaching out the last video to the ones that are hurt and pain and, and talking about the importance of how to deal with mental anguish I want you to really understand that the thing that I'm stressing is you have to let go and forgive those people or it will destroy you I know this for certain many addictions and many things are where people wasn't taught this on how to handle the pain and the hurt that they went through because people say that makes no sense whatsoever you don't understand what these people did them and I said no I do understand I understand I know how terrible it was but I also understand what it's going to do to their heart if they don't do this hey guys I love you I'm going to get off here I've been on here almost an hour uh, thank you for your time if you've watched this and I hope you put it in your heart what we learned from God today how important this is and and know this even if you've went as far as what was explained with Esau I want you to know you can start on that path today with God for one believe in Jesus to have the strength to do this see I don't do this to be saved I do this because I believe in Jesus Christ we always need to understand that I'm not doing this to be saved I'm doing this because I believe that this is what Christ did for me and this is what's in me and I need to start living and walking in that spirit of truth and, and love that's in me through Christ Jesus okay you guys have a nice day praying for y'all